Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. It is not too early, about 830. And I want to jump right into, gosh, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, Bitcoin on the shorter term, we're going to take a look at the higher term and really talk about the liquidity hunt that happened over the weekend and how to confirm if this move is real or not. Additionally, I want to give you three reasons why our group has remained bullish with our long-term spot positions on Bitcoin and why it's working out uh, so far so good uh, despite all the bear signals that have been out there. But briefly, just want to touch on you know why the market pumped over the weekend. Late Saturday evening, the looming danger of the U.S. government shutdown was put to rest as Joe Biden signed an interim budget agreement, this controversial move by Congress ensured the government agents, agencies remained functional. It revised the agreement, lowered the support for Ukraine and a key agenda for the White House that met resistance from a rising segment of Republican representatives. However, it increased the federal disaster relief budget by $16 billion, Satisfying Biden's complete proposal, the interim budget ensures government operations until November 17th. So I guess we're going to be playing the same game in a month and a half. Following unpredictable events in the White House, Speaker McCarthy unexpectedly set aside his call for major budget trims backed by the Republican Party's right wing base. So um, essentially... The U.S. government keeps spending money with no tomorrow, right? And something, eventually, it's going to change. Also wanted to go over a couple notable headlines before we get into how to confirm if this move is real or not. <laughs> or not. The Bank of Japan just hiked bond buying as benchmark yields rise and hit a decade peak. Pretty interesting there. Um, and... Really, there's a severe crash coming to the U.S. office properties. You should see our building. It's just getting emptier and emptier. People are moving out, moving trucks, coming outside. Everybody's still working from home. And China, they're coming under growing pressure to save the housing market. Uh, we talk about China liquidity coming in. Good for Bitcoin. And what do you know? What do you know? Oh, we've updated our terms at the New York Times. Um, Nobel Prize awarded to the COVID vaccine pioneers. I think this is another thing that needs to get shut down. Nobel Peace Prizes have been garbage. Over the, you should just look at who's won them. This is one of the, uh, we got to defund the Nobel Peace Prize because they are garbage. Uh, lastly, another... Um, for all you people out there in California, I got some bad news for you. Lafonso Butler. Emily's List. That is a group uh, that works to elect Democratic women candidates who support abortion rights. She also served as a Democratic strategist to Hillary Clinton, uh, advisor to Hillary Clinton, and VP Harris. So early this morning. Just look at the line of names uh, supporting abortion. Uh, somebody supporting Hillary Clinton and the corrupt foundations over there. And uh, I mean, I, I'm not even going to get into that. This isn't a politics show, but another uh, beat down in California. Another reason to leave or stay and fight. That's what I'm choosing to do. Stay and fight. And I mean, just for fun, you know, to show that, there is the possibility of the American dream. I was reminded of this morning, the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, which was about a man who was homeless, age 27, but became a multimillionaire. And you might have seen the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, not known that it was based on a true story. Um, pretty incredible journey about Chris Gardner. And I just found so many similarities. His name's Chris. Uh, he basically, well, he was born in 1954. I'm a bit younger than that. Um, but 
The guy was homeless. Uh, I definitely had some troubled times as a youngster living on the street. And, uh, and then he had a daughter. And that's when he decided to turn his life around. I had my first daughter when I was 19. And that is when I decided, hey, it's time to give your life to Christ. Time to do the right thing. And um, gosh, what a blessing it has been for me and my family. I was able to buy my first home when I was 23. Um, and, um, well, here I am today. So success is possible. Anything's possible with God, right? We can all, do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So let's get deep and in dive into the charts. And, um, uh, I know that's what you guys came for, but, um, yeah, let's, let's have some pursuit of happiness as Bitcoin is, I think the way we're going to be able to fight against these tyrannical governments that uh, are trying to take away our freedoms. So first off, how do we confirm the move is real? Well, for me, uh, we want to see this come down and make a higher low. Somewhere along the green 55, we want to stay above the box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, which is this guy right here, coming in at 26.6 to call it 26.300. As long as we remain above that pivot, generally going to look good. As long as we hold this trend line, things are generally going to look good for Bitcoin. What else did I want to bring up? I thought I was going to be a little more slick here this morning, but apparently not. We talked about the blue buy signal on the hash ribbons indicator um, on the daily time frame. Now, never in Bitcoin's history. Oh, look, we're closing above the top side trolling band. So, I'm going to get into this in a little bit, but uh, this signal has played out 18 times in Bitcoin's history. It's this one right here. It is the blue buy signal, which uh, measures uh, minor profitability, minor profitability, which uh, when did we get the first signal back here? I'm going to take off the Bollinger Bands, which by the way, that is when I talk about the BBWP, that is when... Uh, you know, volatility expands. We're talking about the width of the Bollinger Bands. As you could see, they were very tight. One of the lowest periods of volatility we've seen in Bitcoin's history. And when you close above the topside Trollinger Band, as long as we're above the topside Trollinger Band on the three-day time frame, especially, um, let's check out the two-day as well while we're here. Two-day, I mean, all looking good. As long as we can kind of, which I don't expect this to continue, um, you know, unless it does. <laughs> but what I want to see is price action actually to come back down and uh, tag that area right there, which by the way, that's going to be the liquidity zone coming in here. Well, this is at 26,000. This is at 25.3. So personally, I would not mind one more wick down, grab the liquidity and then off to the races. But let's just talk about this signal really quick. The blue buy signal, which it's had 18 signals in its history. Only two have failed. And what it says is once you get the blue buy signal, uh, Bitcoin will never have a candle body closure below the prior weekly, excuse me, the weekly low. There it is. There it is right there. Blue buy signal. So uh, prior weekly low, we should never close another weekly below this low until making a new all time high. So that's why we held our long positions alongside a few other uh, indicators, which I'm going to throw those back on here. I'm going to get rid of our Bollinger bands. And as well as we're here, you know, I have conveniently marked off when the next having date is. So this is very, very interesting right now. Very, very good time to be in Bitcoin, in my opinion. I was finally talking about it in the steam room with a buddy of mine this morning. And we're talking about, um, you know, like, I'm not going to, you know, say, hey, you might want to look at Bitcoin unless it's time to look at Bitcoin. And this is one of those times uh, to, you know, get your rally pants on, get your rally hat on, your rally socks and because uh, we're lining up for a very, very nice move here. So blue buy signal, never closing back below this low. 
It's had 18 signals in its history. Only two have failed. One was the COVID virus. Um, and I, I'm not recalling the, the other one off the top of my head right now. But you can see blue buy signal. Boom. We come back. Almost test the low, but not quite. That was the failure. Excuse me. Right here. That was COVID. Let's see if we can find the other failure. So you can see blue buy signal. We did make a new all-time high. So that one is good. Blue buy signal. Boom. New all-time high. Not new all-time high, but new, uh, you know, kind of macro high as the weekly put in a reversal. And we just got another blue buy signal. Let's see a couple more here. Let's see here. Okay, here's another good example. So we get the blue buy right here. And I think this was the failure. No, nope. no, it was not. You can see we wicked into it, but we didn't have a candle body closure. This was still a technical higher low and then new all time highs, party to the upside. Good, good, good. Same thing here, never broke the low. We're talking about 182 bucks and I am not seeing the other failure in, not reporting any failures here. So boom, boom, higher, higher, higher. So another, and the difficulty adjustment for the miners is being reduced, I think in a couple of days. I forgot where I saw the tweet here this morning, but um, all, all good things for, perhaps this was it. Yes. But that's not really a clear stop and reverse point. I'll have to go back and double check that one. But just in general, guys, blue buy signal, very, very good. Very, very strong. Strong as they're, <laughs> they're measuring the miners' profitability. Those are the guys who process all of our transactions. When you send Bitcoin somewhere and you decide it's time, well, that's, that's uh, you, you want to sell your bicycle for some Bitcoin. The first Bitcoin transaction, 10,000 Bitcoin for two pizzas. The miners had to process that transaction, confirm it on the blockchain. The unbreakable blockchain of Bitcoin. Yes, that is it. It's never been hacked in history and it's never failed. 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The market's always open, nothing else like it. And that's why Bitcoin being first to market is here to stay. Market cap dominance is continuing on with the leg up here, which we talked about, the breakout. The breakout target being right there. Okay, uh, Bitcoin dominance up should show that altcoins are weaker than Bitcoin. So you can notice actually on this pullback here, Ethereum actually got hit much harder just in the last hour. Are people dumping their Ethereum? So yeah, and here's what in general I am expecting a lot of the altcoins to do that did pump over the weekend. So uh, trade setups looming. What I am looking at is Bitcoin Cash right now. Although I don't, you know, I wouldn't short this one necessarily, even though it is about to give up those gains. I'm gonna get back to my regular chart. Actually, I wanna, I wanna bring up the second reason why. So the first reason we stayed bullish was the um, hash reference indicator. The second reason one of the second reasons, I want to go to this chart here. On the daily, monthly, we just had the monthly closure for not Ethereum, not Ethereum. And by the way, looking at Ethereum on the monthly, you know, a bit of a reversal doji here holding that trend line. I don't know how much I like it, but uh, I'm going to get on back to Bitcoin here. Talking about Bitcoin on the monthly, I'm going to take off the Bollinger Bands and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about from the BLX standpoint, the longest history for Bitcoin and it's the monthly MACD. The monthly MACD last month printed a nice green girthy, not too girthy, but big enough candle, higher high than the other highs. And you also have the Stokes crossing up on the monthly. 
Very good. Very, very good. And you can see in Bitcoin's history, every time this has happened, we've gone from red to green. Well, you've had some massive moves alongside Bitcoin crossing up from the just absolutely critical zone, one of the lowest MACD reads in history. This is why we stayed bullish despite all the calls. And frankly, I was looking for some shorter term wicks down. Didn't quite get them. So what? Spot buys are different than levered buys, right? And sells. So different strategies. And uh, you can always check out Crypt Courses. Link in the description below if you want to get a free education on how to trade crypto. Um, because there is a difference between longer term spot holding versus shorter term leverage trading. Where you don't care where the price goes. You're just there to make money and take you know, take the other people's money, which it's, it's kind of like, anyways, long story short, that was number two, reason number two, reason number three, reason number three, and we harped on it for months and months and months. I'm going to go back to another chart here. Oh, I might as well leave it on the Gaussian channel. Why not? All right. Uh, back to my regular, my regular chart here. And this is a pretty good breakdown retest of the green 55 on the 15 minute time frame. a bit of an M formation target kind of hitting. So looking for the lower highs and lower lows. And perhaps this was the trap move over the weekend. The trap move as price action was pretty sideways here and just blasted off to the moon. When was that? Uh, Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Big, big green candle there, stopping everybody out who was short. Lots of liquidations going on there. And now what's going to happen? This is an inefficiency candle. So at some point, I do expect price action to kind of fill this up. I don't know if it happens today. There is one more uh, liquidation zone on the heat map that did not get hit, which is right here. If we do take a run up, I would suspect the run gets faded around well, 28,750 to 29,000. So I would expect uh, if we do wick up there, in fact, I, I think that's probably what happens is we probably get one more whip to the upside and then we come back to this 26,000, judge it from there. Um, but how are we going to confirm that the meal, so that the meal is real? Are you hungry for some Bitcoin? We just want to see it come back and retest here on this green 55 and put in a higher low on this time frame. We want to see these two cross to the upside, the 21. And look, crisis averted. Everybody was talking about the death cross. Well, the, the, the death cross on my channel never actually crossed, came close. But I used the 55 and the 200 for a reason because everybody uses the 50 and the 200. So... Needless to say, uh, sometimes it can save you, sometimes not. Long story short, um, if we close a doji candle like this, anything like that today, and then tick below yesterday's low, which would be here at 27,782, then you can expect a tap to the 21 and probably a tap to that green 55. That's where I would expect the next higher low to take place. And in fact, if I'm, if I'm right, and we tag the liquidity at 26,000, everybody's stops are going to be right here, right? So if you went long here, you put your stop loss right below these wicks and you're, you're long, right? Stop losses are going to get hit right there. And well, that could, that could be not what we want to see. Grab the liquidity, boom, something like that. Back above this level at 30,500 bucks, this wick right here. And guys, we're going to see a 50% move. It's been bacon. It's been greased in. I'm going to talk about the last thing that I mentioned. The third reason why we remain bullish on our spot buys here. And that is this guy right here. Come on. Mr. Gaussian channel. The Gaussian channel. And these are the more macro time frames we're talking about here on the BLX on the weekly time frame. So uh, basically never in Bitcoin's history has once once we have uh, 
Oh, again, I need the BLX. I, I should just bring it to the bottom of my chart. So it's easier to get to, but for today's video's sake, the BLX, the BLX, where are you? That's the longest uh, price action history for Bitcoin, the symbol. Okay. So on the weekly time frame, never in Bitcoin history, uh, once this thing has flipped on the weekly time frame from green to red, and then we've closed back above the Gaussian channel, the top side of the channel, right here, right? So green, red, okay, we close above, you're gonna get a free ride to the top side of the band. Once we break above it, new bull market, new bull market for Bitcoin. And uh, never, never has it not just absolutely ripped to the upside and made new all time highs. You can see right here. So this looks a little bit more similar to what we saw back, uh, what we've seen over the past couple of weeks. Um, anyways, green flips red gets above the mean mean band in the middle okay we broke back so we got above we got a free ride at the top side of the channel retested the mean band popped back up and boom off to the races that was a very very pretty pretty run from three hundred dollars up to twenty thousand dollars right here okay flip we start to lose the curvature. Also notice that being kind of first warning sign on the Gaussian channel. Flips red. Oh, bear time. Should have sold there. Uh, from 10,000 down to 3,000 bucks. Okay, we break above the mean band. Free ride at the top side. Breaks above. Retests. And, well, here we, uh, here we did come back for the COVID fake out scam wick you know who knows what kind of banking crisis who knows what kind of new thing they're going to launch across the interwebs on us when it comes to germ warfare right <laughs> but we did ultimately make new all-time highs and that's very nice okay what have we done now we flipped red we broke the mean band we broke the top side challenger band we've come back we're just Bouncing along this band here, and like I said, uh, wouldn't mind a test back to the green 55. But all around, this is essentially go time. And I'm not saying up only from now, because how would we invalidate this whole thing? How would we, how do we know the move is real? We want to see it come back and make the higher low. So what am I talking about? <clears throat> and additionally, supporting factors for Bitcoin. Well, notice that. Notice that getting held down by the Gaussian channel. Okay, so as long as we don't break back below that mean band coming in at 27,119 on the daily time frame, going to look good for some more upside action. Additionally, the four hour, we kind of said as long as we, which this, this does look like a short term top, volatility is now beginning to wane, getting a bit of a sell signal and if the four hour does lose the critical zone and come back down one more time, well, that'll be, and definitely, definitely down below this, the stochastic gets below here. That corrective move likely to take place. Where does a higher low come in? I'm gonna take the Gaussian channel off here. I'm gonna throw up this, this little guy right here as well. And where's my Gaussian channel? The market sessions back on. So essentially, as we as long as we are uh, holding above this area, twenty seven seven seventy. Well, you could expect that wick to the upside at twenty eight nine. At twenty eight nine uh, fifty, would be completely fine. As a matter of fact, that's usually what happens, guys. Uh, we get one more nasty wick to the upside. Stop all these people out that are putting their stop losses right here, right? If you're short in the market, probably a lot of people putting stops right above here, right around here. And uh, we get one more pump to the upside. One more, one more pump to the upside. Well, this uh, one, uh, no, this is, looks like your three rises. One, two, three. 
And so we're looking for to see, to confirm if this is the fake out move over the weekend, right? So we've kind of been talking about this uh, trap over the weekend, which is when we get stuck in a range on the 15 minute time frame over the weekend. So the futures market does close from here, right? Which I'm gonna draw it out just for fun. Market closes on Friday afternoon at what time? So low to the high here. And then the Asian section opens up. And notice a bit of a dead gap there. Um, so we break out above the box. And you can just see back from the last few weekends, this one, that was the trap to the upside. Then it came back down. So... Um, to me, this looks a lot stronger. So what I want to see is the test of this box, right? If we can come back down here, make the higher low, then it's trying to switch our bots around, which we're using some bots now, trying to switch the bots around to a long strategy, in my opinion, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but I'm just giving you my thoughts on the market and what I'm planning to do. So hopefully it does help you. Hopefully it gives you a little uh, bias buster for your own trades. And also want to bring up, so dollar is looking beefy and so is the stock market. Well, it was looking beefy and <laughs> was looking beefy, but this move is getting faded. U.S. market is going to close soon. Is it already that time? No. Uh, <clears throat> The futures market is different than the traditional, so we'll cover that in a, another day, but uh, you can see, yeah, the day started much earlier. Okay. Um, long story short, we got a pump in the morning despite the dollar going up, and I was just thinking to myself, like, who's going to win the battle? Who's going to win the battle? And who has been saying all along that this is the target? I have to I have to pat myself on the back for this one, Chris. Why why where do the bull traps and the bear traps come in? Where do the market makers make the most money? Where do the people get their emotions the most slacked? Right? Is when you coming up to the not point five or the six one eight. That is where the bull traps and the bear traps come in. Notice why the box is there. Not 0.5618. Bull traps, bear traps. Check out the free course, guys. Crypt courses. You'll know what I'm talking about the next time. The link's in the bio. Crypt courses. Click on it. Join the free course uh, to get started. And um, yeah, it's definitely worth your 15 minutes of education. And I'll tell you what, guys. I just signed up for another course myself. You play it on fast forward while you're driving the car... <laughs> Don't drive and watch videos. Never mind. Um, while, you, you know, you're sitting on the couch and your kid's watching a movie, whatever. You got to make time for it. I don't care when you do it. Put it on fast forward. Just get it done. Get it done. Start getting the information in your brain. You think, oh, okay, I've got to sit at the computer and give 15, no, two hours of my undivided attention to this video to make it make sense. No, what you need to do is just start playing the video. Just start somewhere. Just hit the button, start playing it while you're in the car, while you're driving, while you're at the gym. And all of a sudden you're gonna start getting the information. You're gonna know what, where does the bull traps and the bear traps come in? It's the not 0.5 and the 618. What's bullish divergions? What's bearish divergions? What's a bullish engulfing candle versus a bearish engulfing candle? All of a sudden, all these terms will start to make sense and then you will not feel so confused when you're watching these videos. And you know why we've been talking about the dollar going up to this area. And in fact, it's likely probably gonna tag right in the middle of that area, if I had to guess. But uh, actually, here's where the trap would come, right? We just barely get above it. Everybody thinks, okay, it's not a bull trap, it's bullish. And then they throw it back down. 
that would be my guess. Because ultimately, guys, we know the dollar is going to get creamed because they're going to print a lot more money coming up in November 17th, right? The debt ceiling debate was solved until November 17th. And when you see Pelosi and McCarthy like tooting their horn saying victory, you know we just got ramrodded. They sold our future. Like, good luck, kids and grandkids. Like, Welcome to universal basic income. Welcome to AI taking over 80% of the jobs. And like, good luck if you are making it, right? You better own some, your parents, your grandparents better own some Bitcoin. Otherwise, you're absolutely screwed. Absolutely screwed. There is hope for humanity and we all know where that's found. Yes, sir. All right. Because we're more than overcomers, right? We are more than overcomers no matter what the crooked government throws at us. We have an answer. We can discern right from wrong. Yes, that is the truth. From him who shows us all things. Okay, enough of that, enough of that. And the two-year, still marching it up. The 10-year, marching it up. What do you know, guys? I guess um, I guess that TA stuff kind of works out every once in a while. Oh, bullish and about to hit our target. Man, I'm going to start trading bonds here soon. Uh, VIX, 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 VIX. Popping up. Volatility goes up. Stocks go down. What do I want to wrap it up with? The coins that I think are likely to get shafted the hardest. Um... <clears throat> Well, it would be the weak ones or the ones that pump the most over the weekend. And let's just quickly take a look at the crypto banter bubbles. Really a uh, pretty cool tool today. Uh, let's look over the last week. What? Rollbit. Keep your eye on that one. BCH, Solana, Arb, Ave. BSV. I hate to short any of these that are really strong. I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's not the play. Maybe it's Cardano. Stack seems to be getting shafted pretty hard. Um, you know, I think I'll have to go OP. Ooh, OP. OP. Rune. Yeah, don't. I, I, you know, I hate to shaft anything or short anything right now with the market just being bullish. One more liquidity hunt to the upside. But the thing that does make me want to sh short something like Solana or Compound or Bitcoin Cash is this. Well, Bitcoin Cash just put in the hourly uh, snake eye almost. That's a bit of a reversal candle. So, you know, there's going to be uh, some drawdown over the weekend, right? So over the weekend, what happened? You had this green massive candle and a further fake out pump to the upside. So here was this huge range. And what do you know? Where did we hit? From the low to the high on the wick basis, we are going to nail that 1618 fib. So probably lines up with our four drive philosophy of hidden bullish divergence. One, two, three, four. Boom. Hits the 1618. Let's see if that maps out on the bullish and bearish divergence cheat sheet, which you guys should all have. If you don't, check out BitcoinAdvisors.com. Go to the resource center at the top of the page. It says resource center. And you can get a little cheat sheet for that. But yes, that this is the this is a perfect example of the four drive philosophy. Which shows this. Again, I've gone over this. And for all the people that you know want to learn how to trade, I highly recommend you study or begin to study this. But here's a low. I'm gonna mark it off. And then I'm gonna be done. So this is the low we're marking from. And I'm going to draw it out here just so you can see. Boom. So what is hidden bullish divergence? It's when the price is making higher lows, but the RSI is making lower lows, showing that, well, there is a divergence in the strength. 
and this is how it works. So we got one higher low. I'm going to mark that off. One, two, three, four. So four drives of hidden bullish divergence. Breaks the top side of the range with volume, gets a retest, and bam. So that's the kind of, I mean, the retest could come a little lower. And essentially, as long as we hold above this line, good. Or this line right here, good for Bitcoin Cash. But if we start to break back below there, that's when I would say uh, trouble is near. All right, that's it for today. And I'll mark these off too as well. One two, three, four. So three drives gets you a shot to the top side of the range. Oh, what do you know? Right here. That was your third drive to the top side of the range. Your fourth drive gets you to the 1618. Boom. That was the move. With that, make sure you like the video, share it with a friend. If you enjoyed something, got something out of it. If you didn't, don't like the video, share it with a friend. And come back tomorrow and see if you like tomorrow's video. All right. Have a blessed day to you guys. Take care. We are...